think the first time I was stopped, it was a group of me and a group of my friends. We were in Camberwell. Big police van pulled up next to us, pushed us all up against the wall, and said that they were, wanted to search us for a knife. I never kind of pinpointed at the time that it was because of the color of my skin, but now clearly I can, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, look back and, and see that. No steps have ever been taken by the Metropolitan Police Force, by other police forces, to actively address the claims that they are institutionally racist. Mm. The McPherson report came out decades ago. So I want to know what they actually have done and not just hiring black police officers. I used to be a special constable and I used to be a police cadet. I just honestly had this belief that I'm going to crack down on crime and so on and so on. And I think I was quite ignorant at the time. Not having more black faces in white institutions will not necessarily make it a better place mm. because they go around perpetuating the same behaviours that white people do. Exactly. Do you see it, like, as it being something more like ignorance rather than racism now? It's, it's historically idea. racist. That's, I think that's the problem. Mm. Mm. Like, when you had all these racist groups um, in the 50s and the 60s, when they finally were able to push and get the, um, the race relations law changed and to make sure that there were things in place, these people in these racist parties just filtered into the police. And then these people would employ their, fr um, employ their friends and they would filter in to such a way where the whole system is like that. So even if we were to strip it away, you still got a bunch of people that are infected with this concept of racism. The way I see it, authority, just the media, black males are yeah. depicted as violent and aggressive. They're always going to see us as the bad guys. On my release from prison, I was in that position where apparently I was a gun-toting gangster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the label That's that I was given was by saying, the Sun, yeah. by the Mirror, by all these other, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, people in the media. Yeah. It took me going, do you know what? Forget that. Take, take this opportunity and take this negative situation and make it into a, a, something that's it as positive, so positive. As, as could be. The whole black men being portrayed of negative, I bought it. I yeah, bought yeah, yeah, yeah. it. So I accepted it about myself and it just became reality. The there problem is when it's not true, you still get treated as such. So even with Stephen Lawrence, mm. he was not like that. If it was a white family and it was the opposite way around where a group of black boys stabbed um, a, a white guy at a bus stop, yeah. if it, if it, was in Chelsea, it would have been everywhere. Been the guy would have been caught before it hit mm. midnight. It's a covert form of showing that you're, you're, you're not good enough because you're black. We don't need mm. to invest more money in police. We need no to way. invest more no in way. the pieces of work that are going to work with our community around me, being vulnerable, around coming yeah. to terms with what's actually happened to us. Yeah. And not just that we do to each other, so but the way that institutions have treated us, because that yeah. creates such a... The traumatic experiences from, from our schools, from prisons, from the way police treat people, that is the stuff that people carry every day. I feel like we need to start working together as a team to start changing the world now. I feel like it's time for us to become the police enforcement, become the governors, become the politicians. We need to get to the one, the generation before me, we need to get to the, they say, between 12 to 16, I'd say that's the main focus right now. Because them lot, they're still learning, they're still picking up our little traits, isn't it? They're picking up what we do. As parents and as people that are guiding the younger generation, we need to instill in them that you may experience something like this. That does not mean that's you. And I'm a father of eight. What I'm trying to instill in them is that it's down to them. Like, I don't want them to waste their time waiting for the police to be nice to them yeah. or whatever. What yeah. I want to do is instill in them or teach them how you're going to navigate that. As much as we can't go, you know, this is not a black problem. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's for everyone to be dealing with and contributing. But I think it's going to start with us, though.